Press, press, Master Jesus Christ. God bless you all, blessed children of the God. May the name of Almighty God continually be praised forever and ever in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Brother, shall we go into prayer? And so, our most holy Father, gracious and merciful God, the all knowing God, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, Lord, we thank you, we worship you, we adore you. Thank you, my Lord, my Father, for your little children to see another brand new day that you have made. Thank you, my Lord, my Father, for the breath in our nostrils that made us to answer the living this morning. Lord, we know it's not about our might, it's not about our power, it's not about our righteousness. Father, it is only because of your compassion and mercy. Father, Lord, which we can never take for granted. Lord, we thank you. The journey of the night, you never allow us to go it alone. Thank you because you do not allow the bullets and arrows of the enemy to come near your children. Lord, we say receive all glory, honor, and adoration now and forevermore in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, Lord Almighty, King of all glory, your grace and mercy have gathered us, King of all glory, for us to come before your awesome and amazing presence, for us to come and take instruction from you, to know how we are about to live this day to your own glory alone. Father, even we, as we have come, your little children, a clay in your hands, Father Lord, we hear you and not from man. Lord, I pray that our spirit, soul, and body, Father Lord, they will subject to you, my Lord, my Father. Make our, our heart, O Lord Jesus, to be fertile to receive the seed of your work which you are about to sow into our life this hour in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Our Lord and our Father, King of all glory, Lord Almighty, you are giving the grace, my Lord, my Father, to stand before your children, Lord Jesus Christ. Father, King of all glory, not to speak of myself because I have no word of my own. Lord Almighty, I depend solely on you, Lord King of all glory, as a vessel that I have chosen this morning to be used for your own glory alone. Father, I am available, therefore, speak to me and speak through me and remain in me. My Lord and my Father, Lord Almighty, never allow me to stand here to speak myself because I have no one of my own. That is why I am crying, my Lord and my Father, any sin in me, Lord Jesus Christ, in any form, my Lord and my Father, I have been defied, O Lord Jesus. Father, Lord, that will make me to stand to do your work in error or to incur your right to of your blessing. Father, Lord, I pray for your mercy in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Almighty, be your children that have given the grace to come and hear you this morning. Father Lord, was so that as Satan is recording against any one of us, Lord Jesus. Father Lord, let your mercy go ahead, O Lord Jesus. Father Lord, and wash away every record of aggression of the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Holy Spirit, you are our comforter, our helper, our teacher. Because you are here before we connected, uh, with one voice, we hand over the service unto you. Come and incubate each and every soul even as are connected this morning. That everything that we will do from the beginning of this service to the end will be to the glory of God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, King of all glory, every mind wandering spirit, anything that Satan has released, Father, my Father, in order to destroy us, O Lord Jesus. Father, Lord, we come against them right now. We hold your blood against them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Mother Holy Ghost. Blessed be your holy name. For in Jesus Christ, most glorious name, we all have prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Press, press, Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Beloved, this morning, by the special, special grace and mercy of God, me and you have come before His awesome presence. And I want to believe that none of us can beat His own chest and say, Because of whom I am, because I'm so healthy, because I'm more righteous than that brother and sister. That is why I'm alive this morning. We are all alive because of the grace and mercy of God. And we can never take it for granted. That's why the book of Lamentation made us understand. It's because of the great compassion that God Almighty has for me and you. He never allowed Satan uh, to glory over us. And this morning, as he pleases him, he never leave me and you famished. He never allowed us uh, uh, to be a lack of his ways. Because the word of God is God himself. We thank God for this mountain. That every day, every new day, God Almighty has something to say to me and to you. In order to prepare us. So that we will be with him in his kingdom which is his desire. So this morning, I please and join us to open our Bible as we take a reading. A short reading from the book of Galatians. Galatians chapter number 6. Galatians 6. 
and I will read from verse 9 to 10. Galatians 6, 9 to 10. And the Bible said, He said, And let us not be weary in well doing. Let us not be tired, other translations may say. Let us not be weary in well doing. For in due season, in due season, everything is life is about time and season. In due season, we shall reap. In due season, we shall be rewarded, as other translations said. That's if we faint not. In due season, we shall reap if we fail not. Verse 10. As we have therefore the opportunity, let us do good unto all men. As we have, as you have, as I have, the opportunity, the opportunity of being alive this morning, let us continually do good unto all men, unto all men especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Of God, this brings us to a short uh, topic of this morning's exhortation, uh, which is ignore the satanic pressure to quit. Ignore the satanic pressure to quit. The Bible is telling me and you that we should not faint, we should not be weary, we should not quit because in due season. Our reward is coming. The reward of every good works. He that promises and never fail. So we must do everything humanly possible, people of God, to ignore that satanic pressure, pressuring you, pressuring me, to quit the way of the Lord. People of God, where we just read, if we really understood it, or we, with the eye of the Spirit, because the, 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 the race we are in is not an easy race. There are many things, there are many turns on the way without argument. Many things are calling the attention of the people of God. And what is the purpose of that calling? To distract us from the race we are in. Bible, enjoy me and you. Look straight forward. Look unto Jesus, the author of your faith. As we are trying to look Something is beckoning me and you, scratching us here and there for distraction. But this money, God is telling me and you for us to do everything humanly possible to ignore that satanic pressure to quit. So this admonition, I believe, should serve as a boost. To boost me and you, it should serve as a tonic to encourage, to strengthen me and you as we continue this heavenly race. It should serve as a boost, as a tonic. Why? Because our accuser, he knows very well where we are going to. He knows the joy, the fulfillment in the kingdom of God. And that is why he had been there before he was thrown down because of disobedience. He knows to get there is not an easy task, but if we are focused, we will make it. He too understood the scripture, just like me and you. He knew that the Bible said in the book of Romans chapter 14 verse 17, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. And he wants the people of God to, to remain babies, Christians, uh, unmatured. Many Christians are living their Christian life, thinking that the kingdom of God is about meat and drink, it's about only blessing, only prosperity. Then when challenges, when trials of our faith come, Satan will now tell you, say, see what you are doing? I told you I wasted your time. So he understood that the Bible said that the kingdom of God, where we are striving to go, is not about what? About meat and drink, but about righteousness, which he wants us to quit from. It's about what? It's about peace. It's about joy in the Holy Ghost. That is what Satan is trying to, for us to quit from and go back to our vomit. He knows that no matter how me and you strive, if at any point we decide to say, ah, it is too much, I cannot continue again, all that we did will not be counted for again. So that is why on a daily basis, the life of every true child of God is a battle. But 
with God on our side. If we depend and rely on Him, victory is ours. Satan knows. That is why. As you are surmounting this uh, challenge, another one is coming. But he that is not is greater than he that is in the world. He knows. Because the Bible said again, Jesus Christ himself said in the book of Luke chapter 9 verse 62. He said what? Well, any man, any woman, I paraphrase, having put his hand to the plow, having put his hand to the plow, and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. No man. And what is that looking back? By the time we quit, maybe in our mind, maybe in our spirit, or physically. Though we have been in there, our hand may have been there working with him. But the moment we decide to take away our hands or the plow, the moment we decide to fail to quit to win, Bible said that fellow is no longer fit for the kingdom of God. So as this one was coming to me, it becomes an eye opener for me and to somebody I believe to fully understand that whenever we have the opportunity, whenever we are, we have the grace to be using the God's deposit, to be using the God's gift in your life, in my life, irrespective, any time out of any true child of God is using that gift or deposit of God in our lives. A spirit and a truth to serve this God. What are we doing? By that time, maybe you are using your own time. When we are serving God, it's not about money saving. It might be your time. It might be your treasure. It might be your talent. What are we invariably doing? We are honoring and worshiping the Lord that gave us that grace. We should not weary. We should not tire. We should not think of quitting. That is what satanic. That is satanic. The book of 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 4, 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 10 to 11. He said, as every man has received the gift, so minister the same one to another. We are individually given for, for the edification of the body of Christ. He said, one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Verse 11, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracle of God. If any man minister, let him do it as the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So, people of God, but many times, often, there is this urge. Often times, there is, there is this satanic urge for the people of God to do what? To, to quit, to be willing, to throw in the towel. There is this urge on a daily basis for people of God to do what? To quit from the race we are in, to quit from our faith. To quit from the profession that we have made. That it is what? From now on it is me and God. Because you know where God took me from. I know where he took me from. So Satan is finding everything humanly possible. For us to quit from that very profession. From that which we have said. Lord I have given my life unto you. That made us to be believers. So God is telling me and you this morning. In the midst of everything that we experience on a daily basis. We should do everything humanly possible to ignore. That satanic urge. To ever think of that. People of God. The challenges. And that is what many children of God today. Because we are not well grounded in the word of God. We allow challenges. Persecutions and trial. Both within and outside there. When we are talking about persecution challenges. It might be within your own family. Within your own family. Many are going through challenges and persecutions in their own family. Why? Because of their faith and their new family faith or profession. Many could be from husband to wife or wife to husband, vice versa. Or even friends. But in this seven days, the Bible made it very clear that it is only those who are resolute, who are resolute never to quit, no matter the circumstances, 
no matter the pressure, no matter the persecution, it is only those who are resolute in their in their decision that can survive and inherit this kingdom of God. It's not those that say, I try. That's why the Bible says, we should continue to strive until the end. Why? Because many will strive. But somewhere along the line, they will quit the throw in the tower. So it is only those who are resolute in their decision that no matter what, I have put my hand on the plow. No matter what the Lord and you do, there is no going back. It is only them that will survive and to inherit this kingdom of God. Because Matthew chapter 24, Matthew 24, verse 12 to 13, he said, and because iniquity shall, what shall abound, which is the era we find ourselves today. We are still, we are still in the flesh. We are still in this, in this world. We can, we can, we, we can attest to it that today iniquity has abound and the love of many Christians have already uh, was cold. Many that are still thinking they are in the race. Their love for Christ and everything about Christ have was cold. Thirteen answer, but he that shall endure, he shall endure, not momentarily, but he that shall endure unto the end, he said the same shall be saved. The same shall be saved. That is indeed, that no matter the stone that Satan is thrown every day, we must be resolute in our decision to depend and to trust and focus unto this God, because he that promised can never no matter your situation, no matter my situation, he can never fail. He has never failed before from Genesis to Revelation. I don't think it is that my own uh, a challenge or that will make him to be a failure. God forbid. So that is reason why the will of God, we must do everything possible. We must do everything possible to contend with this spirit that wants me and you to give up unto God. God did not give up unto me and you. When the Bible said that even when we are yet sinners, Christ came and died for me. He could not have what given up on us, but he did not. Rather, he went ahead and suffered shame, humiliation, disgrace. Died a shameful death because of me and you. And how can we, because of one pressure or the other, ever think of you know giving up on him? So we must do everything humanly possible to contend with this satanic spirit that wants us to, wants us to throw in the towel, wants us to quit. The Bible encouraged us in the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 15 verse 7. As he encouraged Joshua, he is using to encourage me and you. Because we know there are pleasures, that is the truth. Many of us who are passing through, through challenges of life. No matter how we cover ourselves with our dresses, you have, as, because our faces are different. So our individual is, that is the truth of life. But God is encouraging somebody this morning. He said, have I not commanded thee? Be strong, my daughter, be strong, my son. And of be of good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, we are sorry they go it. And then sort of somebody who do not understand this one will say, Are you telling me not to be afraid? Are you telling me not to be dismayed with all these things happening? But anyone who understood that the word of God is God Himself will say, Okay, God, if you are said so, I hold unto you. I hold unto your word. So what an encouraging promise to keep us striving as long as what we are doing before God, the way we are serving him, we are serving him in truth and in spirit. What an encouraging word. I will not leave you, I will not forsake you. As long as you continue in a holy living, in an intimate relationship with me, I will neither forsake you, nor even though friends may forsake you, even though family members may forsake you, even though people might think that you are nobody again, even though nobody recognizes you again, I will not forsake you. Why not? Hold on to him and do what? And do everything to not to contend with the spirits giving you the impression that it is time to quit. It is time to go back to our vomit. That is satanic. That is satanic people of God. The Bible again said in the book of Second Second uh, 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 Corinthians, Second Corinthians uh, uh, chapter number four, Second Corinthians four, from verse uh, uh, seventeen uh, to eighteen, he said, "For our light affliction, what me and you are going, if you can hold on to God, they are not permanent; they are temporal. That's why the Bible uses that, 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 that phrase. He said, "For our light affliction, which is but a moment." But it's only a coward that will, that will that, you know that will, that, uh, uh, that will see, that, that will try you know to do it out of proportion as if it is bigger than God. He said, "For our light affliction, 
which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and a stellar weight of glory, which Satan knows very well. And that is why he tried everything humanly possible to do what? To make me and you to think of what? Of throwing in the tower. For us to heed to that satanic pleasure to quit. Verse 18, he said, Why we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen? For the things which are seen are what are temporal. Things which are seen are temporal. But the things which are not are what are eternal. That is what the eyes with which we can run this race and succeed. He also admonished us in the book of Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10. He said, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am, I am thy God. I am thy God. If you can believe, I paraphrase. I will strengthen thee. I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Press Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So, people of God, throw you in the tower is not, my beloved brother, my beloved sister, throw you in the tower, thinking on, on, on how to quit. It cannot and can never, it cannot and can never be an option for anyone, for any true child of God who sincerely is hunger of what? Of looking to occupy the mansion that Jesus Christ went to prepare for me and you, according to the uh, book of John, chapter 14, verse 2. Anyone that knows that that is the ultimate where this race is supposed to end. So, thinking of throwing the tower to wait, to win it, is not an option and cannot be an option. But Satan will continue to give us that's the best. You better help yourself. You are suffering. You are doing this. You are doing that. Look at your friend. Look at this. Look at that. Satan knows how to give options. But if you can look unto God and hold on to him, we know that he that promise can never, never fail. Beloved, Unfortunately, why is God telling me and you this? For many firebrand Christians, we say we are one firebrand because there are people, people that you knew before. When they knew Christ, they are fire, fire brand. Everything about them is about Jesus, is about is about heaven. But why today many firebrand Christians quit and go back to their vomit? It's because many erroneously took away their focus, took away their trust. From God and now place it onto man. Many Christians I, I, I mistakenly took away. Bible said, Look unto Jesus, look unto his word, make his word to be a compass. Many erroneously took away that focus, that trust, that belief from God and placed it in the hand of a mere mortal man. That is where the problem starts. They now make man the arm of the flesh, their God. And when such expectation they place on that man, on that flesh is not forthcoming. People of God, what do we see from there? Spiritual fluctuation set in. Because what they place, they took away their focus from God and placed onto man. And you fail to understand that man is man. And when it's not coming, spiritual fluctuation set in. The people now begin, either the person begins to accuse God foolishly. And I became person begin to think about you know going back to his uh, own performance. That is satanic. But if we can look unto God, look unto God, step forward as the Bible enjoy me and you. We know that Satan you know, there's something that Satan does that can make the word of God come to come to be a failure in your life and in my life. Look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. The Bible said in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, 17, verse 5 to 6. He said, Thus says the Lord, that is God Himself. He said, Cause be that man that trusted in man and maketh flesh his man is what is arm, and whose heart departed from the Lord. You see, when Satan succeeds in making one side to depart from the Lord, no matter what you are doing, it's a cause before God. It's an abomination before God. Verse 16, verse 16 said, For he shall what? For he shall be like a heat in the desert. I shall not see when good comment, but shall inhabit the past places in the wilderness, in a salt land and not inhabited, even when you are still in the race. Why? Because you have focused, your attention, your trust has departed from the living God. Because you have bought the kind of a product that Satan is what is selling for you to think about within the race, for you to win it, 
for you to be tired, for you to think about throwing in the towel. Forgetting that God is too much to be a liar because of your issue, because of my issue. People of God, we must be encouraged to keep the good fight of faith in true holiness and true righteousness. And never to give up as a person. Let we must, as, a, as I'm speaking, God is talking to me and before you. We must put a leaf from those that have served God and today they are in, one, they are in the kingdom with him. We must put a leaf from Apostle Paul. In the spirit of what he passed through, he was resolute in his decision to look unto this God, to work with him, and at last, he made it into the kingdom of God, as well as many other apostles and all other children of God in the Bible. And I believe where they are with our Father, that is where we are serving to. So it is needful that we must borrow a leaf from them. People of God, it is imperative in this race that we must run with the timing and the calendar of God and not ours. That is another problem that we humanity will have. We must always know that it is imperative we must run this race with the timing and the calendar of God and not ours. If we don't want Satan to be making us, you know, to, to think that what we are doing, we are wasting our time. No, we must run with what? With the calendar of God. And how do we know that? We must have to be careful. Whenever we encounter challenges, it might be that God wants, that is the time that God wants to, to prove himself. That is why sobriety and what? And vigilance is demanded as we run this race. That's what the Bible tells us in the book of First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. He said we must be sober. Quick means sobriety is demanded. Sober be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a running lawyer, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Press Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So he seeks to devour many Christians in many forms. In many forms. Encouraging us to break our intimate holy relationship with God. Encouraging us to go back to our vomit. Making us to think, oh, that our expectations have lingered so much that there is no hope anymore. But at that juncture, Bible is telling me, and you can read the book of uh, 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 Second Peter 3, 8 to 9, where he tells us that God can never, he's not slack his promises. As men think, we are thinking that he's not because we are running with our own calendar and with our own timing. Read that because of time, Second Peter chapter 3, 8 to 9, people of God, he that endures to the end, as the Bible tells uh, you to understand, in that book of uh, uh, Matthew 24, 13, he that what he that endured to the end, not quit the faith that he or she has professed to live a holy and what and a righteous life before God, irrespective of the storms of life, shall what shall be rewarded and be saved. It is only those that she wants to be saved. And what do we do? Finally, Hebrew chapter 10, verse 23. Say, Let us what? Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. You see, wavering. Has, has slipped in into the church of God today. Many Christians are no longer stable, fluctuation in the spiritual life. And that is very, well, very, very disastrous. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. That is what, what God has chosen to admonish me and you, to strengthen and encourage us, even as we continue this race. People of God, I want us to go on this, or stand up where, wherever it is comfortable for you. Let us ask God in his mercy, in prayer. Let's ask God, because today, God has made me understand that professing Him, that I believe in God is not enough. If we profess, if we happen to read you know, the, uh, this morning's divine inspiration, if we profess to believe, even Satan believes that there is God. If we profess that we believe in God, and that is where our Christianity ends, without the fear of God, without the obedience to His word, without the Lord faith to His word, there is a problem. We're well, going to ask God, say, Father, in any way that my Christianity, O Lord Jesus, it's only to believe that you are the God that blesses. Without your fear in me, without obedience to your word, without faith in your word, Father, please have mercy on me. My Lord and my Father, this morning, therefore, as I'm talking to you, ask your God, say anything that Satan may bring, in order for me to think about quitting, in order for me to think about joining the tower, in order for me to win in this race, Father, Lord, to this morning, I receive the grace to overcome that, that satanic pressure, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let's open our hands in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, my Lord, my Father, Lord Jesus, I am a Father, Lord Jesus, my Lord, Lord Jesus, my Lord, my Father, Lord Jesus, he did my Lord, Father, Satan is bringing my Lord, Father, Lord Jesus, Father, Lord, for me, my Lord, Father, Lord Jesus, to take my Lord, Father, Lord Jesus, of with you, my Lord, my Father, Lord Jesus, Father, Lord, Lord Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, my Father, Lord Jesus, Father, Lord Jesus, my Father, Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus, my Father, Lord Jesus, my Father, Lord Jesus, he said to him, Father, Lord Jesus, Father, Lord, I receive that grace, my Lord, Father, Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus, my name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, my Father, Lord Jesus, yes, Lord, you for glory, Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, my name of Jesus, Lord Jesus, he said to him, Father, Lord Jesus, I receive that grace, my Lord, Father, Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus, my Father, Lord Jesus, thank you, Father, Lord Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, my name of Jesus, Thank you, Father, Lord Jesus. Blessed be the name of Father, Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, keep Lord Jesus, mighty name of Jesus, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. I have a Father, keep Lord Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. For in Jesus Christ, mighty name, we have prayed. Ah, uh, just as Jesus Christ told Simon Peter, he said, Simon, Simon. Satan, what Satan is, is to is to steal, is to steal your soul to see you like a wheat. What why Satan is you know bringing throwing in a, every arrow, every rock to me and you is what is to see us as a wheat for us to see our soul in hell. We're going to ask God Almighty, say Father, as you stood, my Lord, my Father, for Simon, oh Lord Jesus, Father, Lord. Through your word, oh Lord Jesus, Father, Lord, stand for me, my Lord, my Father, that no matter the pressure, no matter the challenges, no matter, my Lord, my Father, Lord Jesus, the trial of life, Father, Lord, that Satan will not save my soul as a witch in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord Jesus, my Father, Lord Jesus, he is to do my Lord, Father, Lord Jesus, Father, Lord, help me, my Lord, my Father, Lord Jesus, that no matter, my Lord, my Father, Lord Jesus, what Satan will bring, my Lord, my Father, Lord Jesus, that you will not be able to save my soul, my Lord, Father, Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus, my name of Jesus, Lord Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, help me, my Lord, my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, help me, this is a my Lord, my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus, mighty name of Jesus, thank you, Father, Lord Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, my name of Jesus, Yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord Jesus, thank you, Father, blessed be your name. For in Jesus Christ, mighty name, we have prayed. Uh, it. as I pray this morning, and we have that resolute of mind, that no matter what Satan is doing, I am now resolute, that I can never think of doing the towel, of quitting, because there can never be option, as you sincerely make that decision, God Almighty will back you and back me up that we will never think of that because that can never be an option but the grace for us to continually strive in true holiness and righteousness and at the end we'll be able to meet our Father in glory. we we'll receive that grace this morning in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. Amen. Beloved, are you out there? By the grace and mercy of God you are alive this morning. You have heard his word. I don't know what is going through in your life. You know yourself better with your God. But no matter the pressure, no matter the challenges, if you will not give your life to Jesus Christ, can make this bold decision, take this bold step uh, to give your life unto him. Confess him into your life to be your Lord and personal Savior, to be the shepherd and bishop of your soul. And confess your sins before him. He's the only one who can wash your sin, even as though it's like a scarlet. He said, I will make it as white as a snow. He's the only one who can do that. And you receive the boldness and the step to be able to overcome every satanic pressure, making you to become an enemy of God. So if you make that decision to give your life unto a place, do so. Do not allow procrastination, you know, to, to get hold on you. As you do so, please go a step further and seek for baptism by immersion, which is demanded from every true child of God. As God has given you the grace to be in his presence this hour in this mountain, you can contact the men of God in this mountain. And by the special, special grace of God, God will always lead us. On how to actualize this in your life and his own glory alone in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, Father, we thank you, we worship you, we adore you. My Lord and my Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, that the Lord for you, that Lord to find it necessary, to, Father Lord, to encourage your children this morning. Father Lord, because you know that the accuser of our soul is always there. Try him, my Lord, my Father, to distract your children, my Lord, my Father. We thank you for your promise and encouraging ways that can never fail. That you are forever for us, my Lord, my Father, Lord Jesus Christ. 
As long as my Lord, my Father, we are doing it in our mind, Lord Jesus, to walk with you, my Lord, my Father, faithfully, my Lord, my Father, holily, you can never forsake us, you can never leave us. Father Lord, as we receive, my Lord, my Father, that promise again, Lord Jesus, Father Lord, our spiritual man has been empowered, oh Lord Jesus, to overcome every satanic pressure, my Lord, my Father, beckoning our attention for distraction. Father Lord, we receive that grace today to overcome in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and my Father, King of all glory. Father Lord, I pray, is there any error, my Lord, my Father, Lord Jesus, any omission or commission, my Lord, my Father, Lord, I pray for your mercy. Father, King of all glory, this world will not stand against me, neither your children, Lord Jesus. Rather, let it continually, uh, my Lord, my Father, stand. Father, Lord, as a tonic, as a boast, for us to continue to run this race, my Lord, my Father, in holiness and righteousness. Father, Lord, that none of us shall fall by the wayside in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Abba, Father, I thank you, I worship you. I give you all glory, I give you all honor. For in Jesus Christ, most glorious name, we all are prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. Press, press, Master Jesus Christ. Amen. Of God, let's appreciate God Almighty with a clap of faith. It's so good in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.